Hello, Stampers. This is Yana Smakula for My Favorite Things. Welcome back for another video tutorial. In this video, I have a clear card idea to share featuring the more brilliant butterflies stamp set. I wanted to create a different type of card, one with a clear overlay and my butterflies fluttering on top of it. I didn't want to add butterflies to a cardstock card. Instead, I wanted it to appear as if the butterflies are flying. So using a clear card base for this worked like a charm. I first settled on a color combination for my card project and I wanted to use hints of gold mixed in with muted greens and blues and a touch of peach. The butterfly stamp set I'm working with today has a fabulous detail layer that can be stamped in black but also looks beautiful when heat embossed. So this is what I started with. I picked the detail layers for my butterflies and I heat embossed those in antique gold embossing powder on white cardstock. I used my Misty stamping tool and heat embossed three of each onto Nina Solar White cardstock. I wasn't entirely sure how many butterflies I would need for this card, but I figured definitely more than one. Two might have not been enough, so I went with three of each. I did heat emboss a sideways butterfly as well, but I actually didn't use it for this card. You can see my heat emboss panels here. They look so pretty. Next, I used my coordinating dies and cut these images out. With this particular stamp set, you do need to do your die cutting before you complete all of your stamping to make sure the stamping matches the die cut outline. So I die cut all of the butterflies out and I saved the negative piece and used that as a template in my Misty to continue the stamping process for these butterflies. I stamped each layer carefully positioning it over the die cut and I used various colors of Distress Oxide ink. You can use various color combinations for these butterflies. Each has two parts, a top part and a bottom part and that beautiful detail layer, which we already heat embossed in gold. So I used Distress Oxides in a variety of colors, mainly blue and green, but again, these can be stamped in so many different colors of ink. You can also do a bit of ombre inking to add some color variation to the wings by inking each section with two shades of the same color, perhaps a light and a medium blue, or say a medium and a dark green. Or you can also use pinks and yellows and other colors. It would also be quite stunning if you just heat embossed or just stamped that detail layer. And instead of using solid stamps to color the wings, use the coloring medium, alcohol markers or colored pencils or even watercolors to add color to the wings in a non-conventional way. These butterflies also look phenomenal when heat embossed on vellum or even colored cardstock. You can emboss them in white or again in that pretty gold or silver for a slightly different look. So don't feel like you have to use all the butterfly layers. If you have the coordinating dies for these, you can really go to town with all sorts of options. By the way, the stamp set comes with this handy layering guide to help you figure out the layer placement on these butterflies. Because I used Distress Oxide inks and because I heat embossed first and did my stamping later, I now had all of that ink sitting on top of the heat embossing. It is sitting there, it's never going to dry, so I needed to remove it from the heat embossing so that I didn't accidentally smear it. So I got some paper napkins and I just pressed the napkins several times onto the die cuts to absorb the residual ink. You actually can see the ink on the die cut, but as I blot it, you can see the ink transfer onto the napkin. So the ink is there and it can be smeared and it can ruin all of that hard work. I'm not wiping, I'm just blotting the ink from the surface of the heat embossed layer. I do wipe it a little bit, just very gently, but only after I've blotted it a few times. With my butterflies ready to fly, I picked a sentiment for this card and embossed it in the same color embossing powder. I created a light peach card base. This measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so a standard A2, and I heat embossed. This is a paper hug sentiment in the center. 
The sentiment comes from the Biddy Hugs and Kisses set. I'm going to place this card base inside a clear card base to create that clear top layer for my butterflies to sit or to fly on. Here you can catch a preview of this idea. I'm also going to add a butterfly to the back of the card and this is going to cover up the adhesive that will hold the cardstock card base inside the clear card base. The trick with anything clear is well that it is clear and any adhesive you use on it will be visible. Some adhesives will be visible just slightly but still visible no matter what you do. So for me to be able to adhere the cardstock card base to the clear one, I created an element that disguised that adhesive, the butterfly on the back. I've added it to the back of the clear card. Next, I added adhesive tape from the inside of the clear card base where the butterfly was positioned. Now, before I adhered my cardstock card base to the clear card base, I needed to trim it down just slightly, about one eighth of an inch. That's because when you add it to the clear card base, it sticks out a little bit. And now I can adhere it inside my clear card base. So this is what it looks like. The front of the card has an additional clear cover, adding a lot of visual interest. The back is also clear, but it is adhered to the cardstock base and the butterfly is hiding the adhesive. Next, I'm going to play with the element placement and I'm going to position the butterflies on the front of the card, scattering them around the sentiment. I'm just using narrow but very strong double-sided tape to adhere the butterflies in place. This is B Creative Tape and I'm adding just a thin strip along the body of the butterfly. I don't want to adhere the wings, just the body. I want it to appear as if the wings are in the air. Because I'm using so little adhesive, it won't show much on the inside of the card. You'll still be able to see it, of course, if you look closely, but it won't be quite as visible. With most of the butterflies in place, I'm going to trim the excess using scissors and you can begin to see this card come to life. I do have a small gap in that top left corner. I feel like I need to add another butterfly there. So I'm going to fill that using a partial butterfly. And I love the result. It's just so, so pretty. I also use some clear self-adhesive drops from my stash to fill in the gaps between the butterflies and to also add additional interest to the card front. The clear dots on the clear card base looked really nice. They sort of blended in. And again, the adhesive was almost invisible. You can't see the adhesive holding the butterflies in place much. It is there, but because we used such a thin strip, it is quite hard to notice. And of course, you can open the card and write a personalized message on the inside. I had so much fun making this card and I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks in my video and will give this idea a go yourself. If you do, you know the drill, please share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. Subscribe now and do hit that bell icon not to miss any new card making tutorials. Thanks for watching, love you guys, and I'll see you next time.